So let's talk about the different parts of the Mara appliance. I think I'll start by showing you this Typodont. Um, if we uh, open the Typodont, this Mara design uses a stainless steel crown on the sixes, but what we call an eggshell crown, which means that um, it's uh, a crown that then has been uh, adjusted so that the occlusal component is removed, which makes it much easier to seat and doesn't have as much change on the vertical dimension. Uh, in this Mara design, we have an expander so that we have the ability to widen the upper arch in preparation for translating the mandible. In the design I'm actually going to fit in the mouth today, uh, we do not need arch development and therefore we have a standard transpalatal arch. The reason we want a transpalatal arch is it limits the headgear effect of the Mara. Also, when you cement the Mara, if you cement one crown at a time, you might have the crown cemented at a rotational angle, whereas when you cement both in this Mara, it's going to fit only in one position. The lower is fairly standard. The lower is a lingual arch, and the lingual arch is important to stop the dumping of the lower incisors. We also have, for patient comfort, this sh buckle shield so that we get less cheek irritation. Now if you look at the original buckle shield, the buckle lingual dimension was a lot and that caused a fair bit of um, cheek biting. The new buckle lingual dimension is being reduced and I find that a lot more comfortable uh, for patients. So lower part of the Mara, lingual arch, stainless steel crown, and a soldered buckle shield. And you'll see the purpose of the buckle shield in, in a moment. Upper part of the Mara, TPA, stainless steel crown, and then what we call the elbow. And the elbow has two components. If I zoom in on a elbow. The elbow has a tie back arm and that tie back arm, when you cement, needs to go on the buckle of the tooth. We're going to show you today how to advance a Mara by changing the shims that are placed on here. So again, showing you the elbow and showing the shims. The shims come in different sizes. So we'll have a look at your Mara kit. Your first Mara will come with this kit. It's called a Mara Accessories Kit. And in there are some important components. We have spacers. The spacers are used for stepwise advancement. So um, you have a one millimeter spacer, two millimeter, three and four millimeter spacer. Um, then we have two different types of elbows. We have the short elbow, which I'll place here, and we have the long elbow. Difference between the two, for a mouth breather, it's easy for them to slip out of the Mara at night with their mouth open. The longer elbow makes that more difficult. We've tried different designs in the past. One of the designs was to make this buckle shield upward, called a Mara U for the same purpose as the patient opens, they can't drop out of the appliance. We found what's more effective is to have the longer elbow. So the components we're fitting today, we're going to fit the upper Mara, which is connected with a transpalatal arch. When the Mara comes back from the lab, you can see they've already placed your elbow and they've used a separator one of these, to hold that elbow in while you cement. Once you cement the upper Mara, please don't leave the rubber elastomeric in place because if you do, it will collect plaque and eventually it will snap and then there's a risk that this will fall outside the mouth. What we use instead is O12 ligature wire. The 012 ligature wire um, is very good to do a tie back. 
So once it's cemented in the mouth, we will remove the rubber component and use the tie back post to tie it back to our molar tube and that keeps it in place. And then next visit, if we want to advance, we will use a ligature cutter and take the ligature tie away, take the arm out of the mouth, add a longer shim and then place that back in the mouth. The last part of your Mara kit will have a talking tool. The talking tool is used with any heavy flat on flat plier. Here just to demonstrate I'm using a vine guard and the purpose of the talking tool is to change the torque of that arm. Now if we look closely here on the demonstration model, as you close, the upper and lower should connect such that the lower arm hits the upper elbow and propels the mandible forward. Right? So the elbow in the upper, arm in the lower, as they contact, much like a fixed twin block, they push the jaw forward. If, however, that arm does not engage the elbow because the elbow has the wrong torque, there's a chance the patient can slide out of the Mara appliance. You can't adjust the arm. It's too rigid, too solid, but you can adjust the torque of the elbow. And the way you adjust the torque of the uh, elbow is using this torquing tool. So in this torquing tool, we are engaging this into the elbow while we hold the straight part of the elbow and the torquing tool then allows us to apply more buckle or lingual torque. The torque is applied so that the upper and lower component engage correctly. So in the patient today, we will be taking out the separators, cleaning the teeth, cementing the upper component, We'll do this one of two ways for demonstration. Some people like to cement the tipe on its own and then insert the elbow. What we're going to demonstrate is a quicker technique where the elbow tied to the TPA is cemented as one unit. What you've got to be careful of there is not to get any glue inside of the um, elbow opening because if you do, then when you go to change and advance, it'll be very hard to get that back into position. So we'll cement the upper, we'll cement the lower, and then we'll check as the patient bites whether they can engage correctly. If not, we will use our vine guard and torquing tool to place the correct torque. Yeah. To cement the Mara, I've tried numerous cements. Um, from the zinc phosphates to the glass onomers. Um, I've gone back to the 3M Unitech multi-cure um, band material. What I like about this is it auto-polymerizes, but that auto-polymerization is started uh, by light curing. So if we look at uh, what comes in the kit, you've effectively got the powder, the liquid, and most importantly, the measure. So we'll talk about what measure, and I use this cement for cementing all my bands. So if I have a banded Hyrax, um, or I have a Mara, or I have a advanced sink, um, any of those appliances, lingual arch, um, a TPA, uh, are cemented with this material. For the Mara, to be able to cement the upper and lower component, um, we have two of the large scoops flat of the powder with six drops of the liquid. And um, that ratio gives us enough material 
uh, which we mix on one of these pads and then we place um, into the crown. A couple of things, never etch your teeth. It'll be too retentive and you'll never remove the Mara. Uh, secondly, uh, there's no need, and if I remove this from the model, you will see uh, there's no need to sandblast the inner surface of the crown, which you may do sometimes with normal molar bands. This gives you very good retention mechanically, and of course you get better retention uh, with the cement. Um, being glass anima, we're getting the uh, possibility of bonding nicely to the enamel. So the process again to cement, we um, pumice, we then um, have the appliance uh, ready to um, place the adhesive. The adhesive mixture uh, is a 3M material, multi-band cement. That is then placed in the crowns. I like to put um, uh, in the surface opening some form of stone adhesive wafer so that when you cement that in the mouth you get most of the cement staying within the crown and then when the patient bites the excess flows to the surface and we'll see that um, clinically. So to summarise Mara appliance using 3M multi-band cement and today we're going to cement uh, this model which does not have an expansion component. If I do a review of the patient's case, this is young uh, uh, Jessica and you can see from her profile she has a retronathic mandible, what we call a class 2B. If we look at her um, records, um, quite a large overjet uh, overbite 100% complete to the palate and a lower lip trap. So she's a mixed dentition phase one case. I like to cement the Mara, get the patient used to it, correct the class two before I then place my brackets. And I use a two by four system for the brackets and we then slowly wheel the child off the Mara and into a upper and lower uh, degainer uh, two by four system. If we look at her cephalometrically, uh, you can see evidence of um, autosis of the cervical vertebrae, characteristic of mouth breathing. Um, you can see the lower jaw in a retronathic position. You can see the 100% overbite and the largely increased um, overjet.